Hello everyone and welcome back. In today's video, we will learn about SVGs and how to create lines using SVG. So let's start with what is SVG. SVG stands for Scalar Vector Graphics. It is a markup language for describing 2D vector graphics. SVG images and their related behaviors are defined in XML files. And these XML files can be created and edited with any text editor like VS Code and also with drawing softwares like Adobe Premiere Pro. To design SVGs, we use the SVG element. The HTML SVG element is a container for SVG graphics. It defines a new coordinate system to design these graphics. It is used as the outermost element of SVG documents, but it can also be used to embed a SVG inside an HTML document. Let's try an example to understand it better. So let's create a new file, say line.svg. Let's save it. And as I just mentioned, to create a SVG graphic, we need the SVG element. So let's add that. So this SVG element, it requires uh, the width and height attribute to define its dimensions. So let's add those as well. Say width 500 pixels and height 500 pixels. Let's save it and let's open it in live server. And as you can see, we are getting this error that no style information is associated with this XML file. So if you're creating a SVG file, then you need to specify the XML namespace for the root SVG element. So let's do that. So over here, let's add it. So XML namespace for XML NS. Uh, we need to give this URL here. So HTTP colon double, double forward slash and www.w3.org forward slash 2000 forward slash SVG. Let's save it. Let's just bring this up here. Let's refresh this. Sorry. So we made a mistake here. So this should be ORG. Let's save it. Uh, let's just refresh this page. And now, as you can see, the error is gone, but we don't see anything on the screen. So let's say you want to create a line using SVG. So for that, you can use the line element. So let's add that. So this is a self-closing element. You don't need a closing tag as well. And this line element, it requires the X and Y coordinates for the first and last point of the line. So it's normal geometrical concepts. So we have x1, y1, and x2, y2 attributes for this. So let's define those. Say x1 is zero. So these are the coordinates. Similarly, y1 is zero. Then we've got x2, say 100, and y2, say 100. Let's save it. And as you can see, we still don't see anything on the screen. And why is that? Because our line doesn't have a color. So for that, we have another property called stroke. So let's give it a value, say red, let's save it. And now as you can see, we've got a line on the screen. We can change the width of this line. So for that, we have another property called stroke width. Let's say three pixels, let's save it. And now as you can see, our line is a bit thicker. All right, now let's try changing some of these values and see what happens. So let's say instead of x1, 0, let's say we've given 20. Let's save it. So as you can see, the line, the starting point of the line moves a little towards the right. Let's increase it a bit more, say 60. Let's save it. And now, as you can see, it moves more towards the right. Let's make it 160. And now, as you can see, the starting point of a line is more towards on the right. Similarly, if we reduce it, say, 80, it moves towards the left. Similarly, if you say 40, it moves more towards the left. Similarly, let's try changing the value of this y1, say 10. So as you can see, our line moved a bit down. Let's increase it a bit more, say 60, and our line moved more down. So let's make it 160, and as you can see, our line is moving more towards the bottom. Similarly, if we reduce it, say 80, it moves up, reduce it more, say 30, it moves more towards up. 
Similarly, let's try changing the value of x2. Say instead of 100, it was 150. So as you can see, the last point or the ending point of the line is moving more towards the right. Let's increase it a bit more, say 250. And as you can see, this point is moving more towards the right. And as the distance between the starting and ending point increases, the length of our line increases. All right, so let's try reducing it. Say, let's bring it back to 80. And as you can see, it's moving towards the left. Let's reduce it more, say zero. It moves more towards the left and towards the starting of our screen. So this is like the entire coordinate system and it moved towards the leftmost. Similarly, if you try to change the value of y2, say 170, it moves down. We reduce it, say 50, it moves up. Let's bring the value of x1 and y1 to 0, 0. Let's save it. So this top left corner is the starting point or 0, 0 of our coordinate system. So let's change the value of x2, say 100 and y2 say 150. Let's save it. And now as you can see, we've got a bigger line. So instead of red, if we change this to say blue, we can give hex code here, say 00, FF00, let's save it. It goes green. Uh, we can use RGB colors here. So say RGB 0, 0, 255, let's save it. And as you can see, it goes to blue because R is zero, green is zero, so red is zero, green is zero, and blue is four, which is 225, so our line is blue. We can change it to any color we like, say light blue, let's save it. And as you can see, we've got this light blue line here. If we increase the stroke width, say 10, the thickness increases, and if we reduce the width, the thickness reduces. All right, so let's try using this SVG file in our index HTML. Okay, so coming down here to the body. So let's try using it as an image. So image requires source attribute. So let's give this file. Let's also give it an alternate text, say line SVG. Let's save it and let's run this with live server. And as you can see in our index.html, we've got this line. So if I remove this and save it, the line goes away. And if I put it back, the line comes back. So this was one way of using SVGs inside HTML document. Similarly, there's another way. And for that, we can use the SVG element itself. So let's say SVG. Let's come here and let's just copy this and paste it here. So we've got the line element here, and also let's give it a width and height. Let's save it, and as you can see, we've still got the line. So if you change the value, say 150, let's save it, and a line moves more towards the right. So if you're wondering that we did not use the XML namespace here, so that is required only when you're creating an SVG file. But if you're using SVG inside the HTML document, then you don't need to use the namespace attribute for your SVG. That's all for today, guys. If there's something that you did not understand, feel free to drop a comment and we will discuss it. See you in the next video. Bye and take care.